it is about technology, it is about the edge, it is about uh, progress, and it is about uh, the environment. It's very much broader, I realized very soon, in fact, in the first meeting, uh, than just architecture. Every three years, a steering committee chaired by His Highness the Aga Khan highlights the major concerns of architectural discourse. The independent master jury examines the nominated projects. This year, for the 13th cycle of the award, the jury shortlisted 19 candidates out of 348 entries. But what distinguishes the Aga Khan Award for Architecture from other prizes is the on-site evaluation of the projects by experts. When the reviewers uh, come with, with lots of ideas, lots of uh, views, uh, you feel yourself more comfortable as a juror. This year, six candidates out of 19 clinched the award. The Tabiat Bridge in Tehran, designed by young architects Leila Arigyan and Ali Reza Bezadi, is the largest pedestrian bridge built in Iran. 270 meters long, it crosses a major highway and connects two parks. There are so many cities like Tehran that they are very much car oriented. There are highways that are cutting through all the neighborhoods and ruining the whole texture of, of the city and the pedestrians are always the victims. I think we do need more and more spaces that are giving respect and good quality space that everyone can enjoy regardless of their income, regardless of their social class, regardless of anything. دیگه ما به پل بودنش فکر نمی‌کردیم. قرار بود پل جایی برای موندن باشه. قرار بود مردم بیان بشینن، معاشرت کنن، فضاهایی رو ببینن. واسه همین دیگه برای ما یه فضای شهری بود. It's such a social success, you know, the fact that it connects uh, two parks, which are separate with a highway, and uh, has become not the bridge to cross from one place to the other, but a place to go, a place to be in. The Bayt ul Rauf Mosque in Dakar, designed by Marina Tabassum, was commissioned by her grandmother in commemoration of her daughters. So I've always wanted to not to have an architecture which is entirely new, but to create, an, I would say, a continuity from the past or history. We have a rich legacy of Sultanate period mosques, which are really beautiful mosques. So I took my uh, inspirations from that. And then also looking into local materials, uh, climate, generally the things that I myself is always trying to propagate through my architecture. I think the mosque is a jewel in the way the light plays in it, in the way the, the, the work of the brick, uh, the skillfulness in the brick, but also in the design. It's a, it's a very progressive mosque in the sense that it does not have the tra traditional elements of a dome or of a minaret. The micro UNR, designed by Zhang Kei, has given a new lease of life to the endangered Chaye Hutong in Beijing. Instead of demolishing it, the historic neighborhood was redesigned and preserved by creating a cultural and communal space. Our idea is, uh, it's, um, you know, is it possible by uh, redesign, reuse, uh, repair and renovate um, these uh, structures to, to recognize so that these could be also interesting um, uh, layers of uh, contemporary uh, life, uh, the history of the city. Donc ça, je trouve ça très, très, très intéressant. C'est une euh, leçon pour pour dire voilà, nous avons un héritage et nous avons des réponses et des solutions pour le préserver, tout en le transformant et, et en accueillant des usages évidemment contemporains et modernes. Super Killen, an urban park in a multicultural and tense neighborhood in Copenhagen, is a fusion between architecture, landscape and art. The objects in the park were chosen with the help of the inhabitants. 
you have more than 60 different nationalities living here. So we thought we should find a way to allow the locals to feel that this is really an expression of their neighborhood, of their culture. Superkielen is almost like an architecture of inclusion. If you say yes to many different ideas, many different cultures, you actually get a richer environment. For me, this really brought the Islamic world into the center of everyone's world in a way. So I think as a political statement, it was a very strong piece, but also as a piece of collaborative um, architecture. It's not exactly urban space, it's not landscape, it's not um, straightforward architecture. I think this was a very interesting collaboration. The Friendship Center, designed by Kashef Chowdhury, is a training facility for the NGO Friendship, which works in rural areas of Bangladesh. Chowdhury drew his inspiration from the nearby Buddhist monastery of Mahastan. The most guiding uh, inspiration was um, the, the ruins of Buddhist monasteries um, and settlements from the 3rd century BC onwards. Uh, in Mahastan, for example, you see the similar kind of handmade bricks. Uh, these are beautiful uh, materials. Um, it has the, the imperfections that give it the texture that it does. And it was very important for me to relate to 3,000 years of history and archaeology. The main part of the building is actually not visible from the street, it's sunken. Um, but in, in many ways it creates um, a beautiful um, set of indoor-outdoor rooms combining light and shadow that provides uh, um, a variety of spaces for use as this training center. And finally, the Isam Fares Institutes in the American University of Beirut. Designed by a world-renowned architect the late Zaha Hadid, for her alma mater. A death adds a poignancy to it, but nothing more than that. The building has a message in its juxtaposition of traditional um, turn of the century uh, uh, architecture of a colonial kind in Beirut at the AUB. It, it juxtaposes a modern building, which is as much a part of the international vision of modernism as it is of one Arab woman's fight for self-expression. Well, Zahad was a wonderful creative personality with uh, an enormous imagination. So it's always been a selection process from an initial proliferation of ideas. And that gives each project a very good chance to find something new and fitting and congenial to conditions, site and purpose. 